kindergarten. I'm Mrs. TH. I'm going to be your art teacher for the rest of the school year and I'm going to be your art teacher all the way until when you're in fifth grade and we're going to have a lot of fun. I love, love, love my kindergarten classes. We learn so much. The things that we're going to focus on this year are line, shape, my favorite color and we do a lot of pattern and texture we're back in school we're going to be doing a lot of painting so if you don't have paint at home that's okay we're just going to use whatever materials you have at home and if you need any supplies just email me separately privately and we can work something out we can figure out how to get you what you need and uh, i can't wait to meet all of you and today we're going to be working with line and a line is a continuous mark. We have many different types of lines and we can use lines to write. We can use lines to draw. We can use lines to make a shape. And we can use lines to make art. There are many different types of lines that we can use. We can do straight lines. We can do zigzag lines. We can make dashes. Dotted lines. Spirals. Curvy lines, wavy lines, boxy lines, and loopy lines. Sometimes a line can travel all over your paper. When we combine our lines, it makes our art look very interesting. When we're working on this project, we want to think about when is a line considered art? Are the lines that I have here considered a work of art? Or if I combine them in a different way, would that make it look a little bit more arty? We also want to think about how can we use line to, use, to make our own art look more interesting? If we add more in a pattern. Does it make it look more interesting? If we combine different types of line, could that help us make it look a little bit more interesting? And where do we see lines in our own lives? We can see line all over the world in every part of our life, but especially in art. This is The Still Life by Henry Matisse. How does he use line in his art? This is a landscape by Vincent van Gogh. How does he use line to make his artwork more interesting? And this is by Sol LeWitt. When is line considered art? Is this even art? Where do we use line in our lives? For this project, we're going to focus on just using different types of lines. And you're going to choose from two different options. Your first choice is to make a hot air balloon. And what we're going to do is we're going to fill that hot air balloon with five different types of lines. And then we're going to add in the colors in the order of the colors of the rainbow. If that's not interesting to you, you can also choose to make 
an ornament. So here I have two ornaments, but you only need to make one. And you can choose what kind of a shape your ornament is going to be. And these are just two examples. But again, just five different types of lines across your ornament. And then fill in the spaces with the different colors of the rainbow in the order red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and violet. So let's get started. Okay, for this project, you're going to need a pencil and something that you can trace with black. It can be a marker, and I like to use permanent marker, or a crayon would be my second choice. Make sure it's black. You can also use a black colored pencil. In order to add color, you can choose crayons, you can use markers, or if we were in the classroom, what I would choose is I would choose watercolors. Again, just use what you have at home in order to help you make your project the way you want it to be. The last thing that we're going to need is we're going to need brown or black paper, kid scissors, and some glue. If you have only Elmer's white glue, that will work as well. So let's get started. With your pencil, what you're going to do is trace, sketch out a large hot air balloon shape. Now a hot air balloon would be large at the top and it would get smaller at the bottom, almost like a light bulb. Just do the best that you can. Obviously mine is not perfect. Um, whatever you can do is really great. Inside that we're going to draw five lines. We're going to draw different types of lines. So, keep it simple. Start with a straight line. Make sure it goes from the left side of the balloon to the right side of the balloon at the top. Now we're going to leave some space and do a different type of line for your second line. You should leave enough space to color or paint in between, okay? Here, we're going to do a third line. We don't want to put the lines too close together. We want to leave a nice amount of space in between the lines. So if you make a mistake, you can always just erase your line. and move it down. Okay. Next line, I'm going to choose a curvy line. You can do any lines that you would like. If a curvy line is too difficult for you, stick with some of the straighter lines like the straight line or the zigzag. The dashes are great. You could do dotted, which is a nice easy one filled with lots of little dots across. So we have one, two, three, four, five lines. You only need five lines. No more than five, no less than five. Next, what you're going to do is you can take either your Sharpie or your colored pencil or your black crayon and you can trace it. I'm gonna choose a Sharpie. And now that I have the lines that I want, I can just trace. If you use a crayon or a marker, then you can take your eraser and just erase any of the extra pencil marks. Just clean it up. Take pride in your work. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we are going to color in the order of a rainbow. Okay. You can use markers to do this. You can use 
crayons to do this. I'm actually going to use paint, but anything that you choose to use is, is your choice and will be just fine. At the very top, we're going to start with the color red because we're going to paint this like a rainbow. So we're going to start with the color red. Now I'm going to take my water, I'm going to clean my brush, wipe it off. The next color in the rainbow is orange, so I'm going to take some orange, paint in the next section. Now I'm glad that I used a permanent marker because it's not going to smear when I add in the paint. If you do not have paint, that is absolutely fine. In that case, just use a crayon. So the next color in the order of the color of the rainbow is yellow. We have red, orange, yellow. So we're gonna do a little color theory today in addition to your line study. Red, orange, yellow. Next color would be green. If you choose to, you can also use a marker. Now you do not have to combine all the colors. I'm just trying to show you your options. But again, if we were in the classroom, we would just be painting. But if I didn't have paint at home, I would probably just choose crayon or marker. Colored pencil works well too, so we just use whatever we have. Okay, so we have red, orange, green. After that, we're gonna use some blue. And notice how I filled in all the sections. There's no white left when I'm done with each section. My last section is going to be purple. We also can call purple violet. Those are two words that mean the same thing. So violet or purple. And I have a beautiful rainbow hot air balloon. I'm going to finish it off by adding two ropes. And then taking my brown or black paper and cutting a small basket. If you want to, you can take your black, make your basket a little bit more interesting by drawing some X's on it to make it look like a basket weave. That's a lot of X's. Maybe I'll do different lines since this is a line study in the center. I can do lines up and down and lines across. We call those horizontal, the lines left to right. And vertical are the lines that go up and down. Okay, so I have my basket. On the back of it, I'll add a little bit of glue and stick it right on And that is my line hot air balloon. Remember, if you choose this project, take a picture of it, save it to your computer, open up the assignment under the classwork tab, save it, and then turn in your work. So you're going to upload it to the classwork assignment and then turn it in and I will be able to view it through Google Classroom and um, I'll be able to use it for other things. Make sure that if you're not able to do this on your own, you check my, my tab, my stream, and I have a video and I have slides to show you how to do it. You can also email me and I can show you over Google Meet. Thank you. If you choose to do a Christmas ornament using line, we're going to start by drawing just our basic shape of a Christmas ornament. And I'm going to draw two different Christmas ornaments, but you are going to choose 
one. So I like long ornaments that almost look like leaves. And at the very top, I'm going to just draw my place for the hook. And I also kind of like ornaments that are round like a ball. And if you want to, you can trace something that's round. That's perfectly fine. But I would encourage you to try to draw on your own without tracing. Because I think that it looks a lot nicer when kids draw things all on their own. And just like the, oh boy, just like the hot air balloon, we're going to trace over our lines in black. And you can use a permanent marker like I am, or you can use a crayon or a black pencil, whatever you have. And I'm really not being very careful to keep my lines on my pencil lines. So I really should go over and just erase all those lines that I missed just to make it look a little neater. Now, remember, if you choose to do the Christmas ornaments, you are not going to do the hot air balloon. You only need to choose one. Just like when we did the hot air balloon, what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to draw lines across and leave spaces. We're going to do five lines across. Now a loopy line is a really tricky line. If you don't feel that a loopy line is the line for you, then stick to something that you know that you can draw easily. If you want to try something a little tougher, then practice on a scrap paper. And when you feel that you have it right, then add it in here. So we have one, two, three, four. We're going to add one more line, okay? And just remember, you don't need to do this. Um, you don't need to do two, you only need to do one. I'm gonna put a boxy line, because I find that my students love this one, although it does take a lot of concentration to do that. Um, let's see, a wavy line. And I'm gonna do one more straight line, because I don't have a lot of room. One, two, three, four, five. And again, we're gonna trace over. And you can either use crayons, markers, colored pencils, or paint. And we are going to fill in the spaces in between our lines with the rainbow colors. This is something that we are going to talk about later on in the year. But whenever I can, I like to combine concepts and art so we can continue to learn them in different ways. So we're going to start with the color red, not necessarily with paint. But if you have paint, I encourage you to use it. If you choose not to use it, or if you don't have it available, crayons. Markers, colored pencils work terrific. Red followed by orange. If you use a permanent marker, it goes right over nicely without smearing. Same if you use a crayon. It does what's called a crayon resist or a wax resist. It really has a lovely effect. Make sure you clean your brush if you're using paint, if you're using crayons. Then that's one thing you don't have to worry about. Yeah, it's really light today. And 
this is just a nice seasonal decoration if you choose to do it. If you notice in your watercolors, a lot of times your colors are already arranged in the order of the rainbow. So if you're using watercolors, that should help. Green, followed by blue, the key to painting carefully when you're using watercolors is to make sure that when you clean your brush, you wipe it really, really well. And our final color is going to be purple or violet. We can call purple purple, or we can call it violet if you look at your crayon for purple. And you will see the word violet, and in parentheses it says purple. Both of those words mean the same thing. So, as I said before, please take a picture with your phone or your device upload it to your computer and then attach it when you turn in your work on the classwork tab. And then to finish up, all you need to do is add a background. You can cut out your picture and you can glue it to a background that you find in a magazine or something. You can make a collage. You can simply just draw a background behind your artwork. Um, I just drew a simple landscape here. You could draw um, yourself in the hot air balloon flying over a city or over Jefferson if you want to. Over here, I just drew some branches from my Christmas tree. If you want to, you can cut it out. You can hang it somewhere in your house and take a picture like that and then submit. Um, be creative. I want to see lots of different things, not just what I've done. You guys most likely have better ideas than I do, and I can't wait to see what you can come up with. Good luck.